Hello everyone, welcome to another swap and research challenge. And this time I'm doing it with TED Talk stamps. For those of you who don't know, Swap and Research Challenge is generally two philatelic YouTuber swap some mystery stamps and do some research from the stamps from each other. We send our mail on the same day and release the videos at the same time. Last year I did it with Lisa from Stamp Cat Stamps and Ted did several swap and research with different philatelic YouTubers. I'm so excited to do this challenge with Ted because he is an experienced collector and a well-known philatelic YouTuber. But it is also a challenge to choose stamps for Ted because he has done a lot of video in a wide range. And But I decided to send some stamps from my favorite island, the Isle of Man. I think he hasn't done any videos about Isle of Man. Here are some Isle of Man horse tram stamps. I know the Isle of Man has horse trams, but I don't know any details about them. So that's for Ted to research. And there are also some gifts for him, also from the Isle of Man. Here is a Superman cover for him. Ted likes Superman. And let me get some stamps for him. Okay, that's it. I will send this letter tomorrow. This is my local carrier box, a Queen Victoria white, quite old one, and it, and it just has been painted. So right. So, good luck. Hi Richard, I'm going to select the against the rule this time. Instead of specifying which stamp for you to research, I have enclosed four issues and will let you decide which one appears to you the most to report on. I'm looking forward to seeing your choice and watching the video. Take care, my friend Ted. Oh, thank you. And sorry I accidentally cut your letter. Okay, that's it. Uh, Ted is the one who expanded the concept of swap and research challenge. For example, last time he even did this challenge with someone who is not a YouTuber. And this time he changed the rule, but I like it. s and challenge is a kind of mystery challenge. I didn't know what was he going to send me. So there is a risk that I already have the stamp or even I have introduced it either on my channel or on other platform. So this is the way to reduce this risk. I don't know why he did this, but it's a good idea. Okay, let's look into these stamps. One issue from Lithuania and the other three from the US. What attracts me the most is the one with hot air balloon. You see this? It's a block of stamps. Okay, it is an airmail stamp. The face value is 7 cents and it should be issued in 1959 and it's like a centennial of an event I think. Lafayette. I haven't heard that place before. I don't know if it's just an airmail stamp which features a random event 
or disguise is related to airmail. 1859 is much earlier than the invention of airplane. So, was there some hot air balloon mail? I don't know. I need some research. So, see you later. Yes, the theme of this stamp is related to airmail. When we talk about airmail, you may think about mail delivered by airplane, or you may think about the inverted genie. But airmail can be more than this. Broadly speaking, pigeon mail is a form of airmail, and the use of aerial vehicle to deliver mail can be traced back to before the invention of aeroplane. What kind of aerial vehicle? Hot air balloon, of course. The first manned hot air balloon flight was made in 1783, and two years later, a hot air balloon was used to deliver mail. Just for private use, it was from Dover to Carlisle, and it's just across the English Channel. The event featured on this stamp was the first official air mail of the United States. In 1859, the postmaster of Lafayette, Indiana, entrusted a professional balloonist, John Weiss, to deliver some mail via the hot air balloon Jupiter. On 15th August, the following notice appear in the Lafayette Daily Courier. Balloon mail. Professor Weiss will take a balloon mail from the city tomorrow. All persons who wish to send letters to the seaboard will place them in the post office before 12 o'clock tomorrow, properly stamped and directed via balloon. The mail was supposed to send to New York City, and Weiss was scheduled to ascend on 16th August but it was delayed due to unfavorable conditions. On 17 August, at precisely 2 p.m., the Jupiter ascended from Lafayette. It was Weiss's 233rd voyage by balloon. The local newspaper reported it was the largest ever assembled at Lafayette on any occasion. There were more than 20,000 persons in the town square. Lafayette lays in the past of the prevailing westlies. So, according to West Vision, the wind will push the balloon to the east, and he planned to land in area New York or Philadelphia. But on that day, the air was still. Weiss had to ascend to 14,000 feet, an astonishing altitude at that time, before he found any wind at all. But the breeze pushed the balloon to the source. After five hours aloft, Weiss was forced to land near the town of Crawfordville, just 30 miles south of Lafayette. After landing, Weiss gave the mailbags to a railroad postal agent who put them on a New York bonded train. The forced landing led the local newspaper to rarely refer to West's transcontinental voyage. So this is the unsuccessful first official airmail. The entire bunch of mail vanished from the public view for the following 98 years, and in 1957, a cover with inscription via Balloon Jupiter was found. The envelope, addressed to W.H. Mall, No. 24 West 26th Street, New York City, and is franked with the three-cent stamp of 1857, cancelled. Lafayette, Indiana, August 16, 1859. 1858 date has been added at the lower left, which should be an arrow. The letter reads, Dear Sir, thinking you would be pleased to hear my improved health, and I embarrassed the opportunity of sending you a line in this new and novel way of sending letters in a balloon. Professor Weiss leaves the city of Lafayette this day at half past three in his balloon Jupiter, and expects to land in Philadelphia or New York. Love to all, your affectionate friend, Mary A. Webb. The letter and cover were later acquired by the Smithsonian Institution, a group of museums, education, and research centers. Today, it is housed in the National Museum of Washington, D.C. The National Postal Museum was actually established through a joint agreement between the USPS and Smithsonian Institution. Smithsonian is a perfect home for the Jupiter cover because John Weiss had worked with Smithsonian 
to get some meteorological data. He carried a Smithsonian barometer on the flight of the Jupiter balloon. John Weiss was passionate about hot air ballooning and some related scientific experiments. Sometimes he is labeled America's first aeronaut. He is credited with 463 ascensions in 44 years and left behind extensive writings. In 1879, 71-year-old Weiss was lost in a flood over Lake Michigan. He dedicated his life to hot air balloon. This 7 cent airmail stamp was issued on the centennial of John West's balloon flight in Lafayette. On the first day ceremony, one memorable flight was made by the then Balloon Club of America, launching from Lafayette and carrying the first day covers with them. The issue of this stamp also caused some controversy because the 1859 flight was definitely not the first time that mail had been carried by a hot air balloon, so some people thought it was not enough to issue a stamp. Only this letter is the earliest surviving hot balloon mail. For example, John Weiss made a record-breaking flight from St. Louis to Jefferson County, New York, a few weeks before Lafayette's flight. It was a 809 miles flight, a record stood for over 50 years. On that journey, he also carried some mail, but unfortunately all of them were lost in a crash. If some of them were found, it would be another story. Anyway, this stamp helped me to learn more about the history of air mail, but hot air balloon mail never seemed to go mainstream because it is so weather dependent and so uncertain. After the invention of airplane, people had regular air mail, which is another story. Let's also take a quick look at the other three set of stamps that Ted sent to me. Fourth July by Grandma Moses, issued on 1st May 1969, one stamp of the series American Folklore Issues. India Art, Pacific Northwest India Musks, issued on 25th September 1980. And this one, a miniature sheet, features the animals and plants in the Suvento Bellsphere Reserve, issued on 19th January 2013. Let's also have a quick look of the cover full of stamps uh, issued from 1936 for a stamp show in New York and the Civil War and one issued last year, which commemorates the author Lugan. Three ounces for every stamp should be 98 cents. These four are 12 cents, 20 cents. So together it's $1.30. I think that's the exact postage. For the letter to the UK. I love exact postage. Well done, Ted. I really love this miniature sheet without perforation, and it was cancelled in Dallas. Okay, that's my research, and I enjoyed this challenge with Ted. I'm so happy to see more people have done this challenge, and many thanks to Ted for promoting this concept and introducing the new rules. I made a playlist of the S&R challenge. You can check the link in the description. And most of them are done by Ted, actually. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and follow me on social media if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.